Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Avatar The Last Airbender Book 3 Episode number 19, 20 and 21. Now this video will have a, uh, my reaction to nine, episode 19 and 20 and another video will also be uploaded. I think it's, it has already been uploaded. You should check it out. Uh, it's uh, It will only have episode number 21 and uh, in the end as i do my discussion i'll also give my whole opinion on avatar whole, as as a series in a whole and you know how i liked it and what are my future plans with Korra and all that stuff i'll like you know i'll be talking in that uh, final episode uh, discussion section so that will it'll be kind of like that so this episode will be 18 uh, uh, 19 and 20 and the other uh, and the other video will be uh, episode number 21 so yeah i'm sure it's, it has already been uploaded if you uh, like, you know, if you have completed this video, you can go check it out. So anyways, um, so the previous episode, it is the start of the four part, uh, four episode, uh, you know, big arc, final arc, I'm guessing, uh, of Avatar. And I'm guessing this will be the final battle with Ozai. And uh, the thing that happened, uh, oh, before that, we had a little episode where, you know, like there's this oh, Avatar play going on and how uh, the Fire Nation was kind of making it seem as if the Avatar, obviously Avatar uh, lost in the end and how uh, Fire uh, uh, Lord Ozai is the greatest and all that stuff. And no one were happy in the end by the way it went. And uh, yeah, like people were frustrated. And I'm talking about Ang's crew. They were frustrated. All the other people, the Finishing people were very happy. <laughs> so that was that. And then episode number um, eight, 18, uh, we had uh, this beginning of the final arc where the whole problem, whole dilemma of actually killing Ozai comes into play. Ang starts thinking about it very seriously now. And like, you know, like everyone says, not everyone, but like everything is on Ang's shoulders. Ang needs to kill the Fire Lord, but Ang doesn't want to do that. He wants some other way of actually handling this situation. And let's see what he, what answer he actually comes uh, to at the end. And uh, like you know, like when he was struggling, he suddenly got started sleepwalking and got transported into a an island in the middle of nowhere now that's like a thing everyone's looking for him he's nowhere so i'm guessing there it must be something related to his dilemma that he's facing so let's see what happens in this episode so yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode number 19 of avatar the last airbender book 3 so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one all right, the old masters. Hmm. The tavern, isn't it? <laughs> Good old days, yeah. Grand <laughs> Park. Okay, we need. To... Oh no! <laughs> Whoa! What? What? Ah. <laughs> Appa got a new friend. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, that'll work. All right, let's go. I think it'll probably. Whoa, what's he doing? Um. What? Oh, maybe in the spirit world. Yeah, this is some other like dimension or some. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, that's true.
ok no yeah he's not in this world anymore well um iron <laughs> wow all right okay so we're going to meet iron now that's good i think he's most probably in the lotus headquarter you know the lotus style the, the, the secret organization that they have whoa long distance wait is it what is this place yeah i was thinking it does make sense if, if he's in basing say hmm Oh, maybe you need to meditate here or something. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, he can meditate. Okay, there he is. Okay. All right, so he needs to. Oh. True, not only this, like the whole Ozai situation. Wait, oh no, oh no, oh my god, great. Wait, this is the, uh... oh, <laughs> Boomy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. True. Okay. But still, that doesn't... Uh. <laughs> yep. Uh, what is it? Zhang Zhang, wasn't it? Oh my god, he met... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gram Gram. <laughs> no, that's that's just bad. Jung Jung. Yep. Old people, that's not a Okay, yeah. Yep. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. 
So you see, oh, he's with them. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Boomy with his. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> oh my god, Boomy is up. <laughs> okay. I think this is the first time he actually meets her, isn't it? Like face to face. She did possess him. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right. Makes sense. Yeah, like Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> oh the clips nice okay that's when he did it okay good well your firebending won't work <laughs> nice yeah and 8 minutes is enough to defeat everyone. Oh! <laughs> My god, this guy. Whoa! <laughs> well, yeah, there's no one in here, you know? Everyone's fine nation people, so he can destroy the city as much as he can without harming, harming any of his own people. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ooh. Well. <laughs> hmm. Well. Ah. Uh. Okay. Maybe some other avatar. Who else are there? Like, I think we only know these two. Roku and Kyoshi. Kuruk. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, the face stealer! Oh my god! Yeah, he needs to make his own decisions. Like, getting in advice from others is good, but he does need to face it himself and come to a decision himself. Old people, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Whew. After a long time. I'm sure he's like sipping tea or something. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, like you you know I wrote he's not. I'm sure he's doing something completely irrelevant and stupid. Let's see. 
Oh, he's sleeping. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see who Oh, wait, who's this? Oh. Yang Chen. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. That's Yeah, but they have not saved the world. Wow! Oh my god! That's really true! Like... That is worldly attachment. Being avatar means you cannot put yourself... You cannot break the chains of your worldly attachments. Otherwise you won't be an avatar. Wow, I never thought about it in that way. <laughs> I will be like, wait, am I dreaming? Oh no, wait, he knew. Hmm. <laughs> Well, because it's a Iroh. Just, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Mm, fell asleep. Okay, so what is this place actually? This is like a. It's coming closer, not getting bigger. Wait, so the island is moving. Where are where are we actually? Like. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I don't have time to... <laughs> no, what's he doing? Wait. Wait, this is an animal. This is not an island. Wait, no, wait, what is this? Okay. Wow, I think I remember there being an anime where there was like, you know, this turtle who moves? What was that? <laughs> yeah, it's the avatar's duty. Oh. True. Yep. 
Avatar needs to do it. Yeah, everyone will. Okay. I don't think he. Yeah. It's you, Zuko. But if grown. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And face your destiny. Oh yeah, we forgot about her for a second there. Yep. <laughs> help, help, bang. Oh, okay, okay. Whoa. Eel hound. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, he'll have. Yeah, just chill. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they're going to Basing Say. I'm talking about Iron and his group. Saka's going to face uh Saka and his crew is going to face um the air fleet and uh Katara and uh Zuko are going to face Azula and Aang is going to face the Fire Lord. Okay. All right, so what is this animal? Okay, what is this? Whoa. Is that a... No, it's a turtle. No, where did, what is it? <coughs> Lion turtle, okay. Wow, it looks cool. Oh. Whoa. Wait for him. Who? Okay. Great. Oh, I think it, uh, the turtle was talking about Ozai. Wow, look at that. My God. Up, oh, the comet is here. Okay. 
Oh, this will be very tough. And it's here. Okay, I think that's the end. Yep. Okay, now obviously I'm going to resume, but before that, I'll have to discuss about this episode. So this is episode number 19. Excuse me. Okay, here we first we go to uh, Jun to ask for help about the Avatar, where he is, track him down, all that stuff. Jun does help, but unfortunately, uh, like she can't do anything because it was as if Aang was like in an alternate dimension or like in a, in a completely different place. And it, it's kind of weird in a way because in the end we see the turtle coming back to land. So I'm guessing during that time when they were trying to get Aang sent, he was probably not in this world, it was somewhere else. And that's why they were not able to find him. It was like his existence suddenly vanished from this world. And uh, after he kind of got, like, you know, got an answer after meeting all the Avatars, he, um, he, came, uh, he came back, the turtle brought him back. And I think it was something like that. So that's why they were like, yeah, Ang is here no more. We don't know where he is, his existence is gone. Ang and Momo, both up there. So <clears throat> now, obviously we then our next target was iro tracking down iro because yeah iro is probably the one who is closest to beating the fire lord of after ang so <clears throat> we meet iro again now it's really nice to see like you know ang uh, not ang sorry um zuko and iro again talking about the whole situation and you know like now it's he was sleeping at the beginning and when he woke up uh, he was not looking at uh, Zuko, probably because he was afraid that, as he said, like, I was afraid whether you have lost your way or, or not. So I'm sure he realized that maybe, like, you know, he, he probably realized his mistakes. That's why he came back here. But at the same time, it's like the human heart, you know, like, even if you know something is going to happen, there is still that little anxiousness you feel within it and he was probably feeling that he didn't know what to say that's why he was kind of looking away from zuko and you know like waiting for him to say whatever he wanted to say then he'll respond and zuko apologized zuko was like i know you won't you know like you probably don't like me after everything that i did and um and then they hugged like that was actually really good like you know nice scene um <clears throat> It, like you know it, it shows us how iro iro never really lost faith in zuko iro never did that iro just felt worried and sad that he lost his way that was the whole thing and that's true like you know what can i say like true love in a way that you you just feel sad seeing the person who you love so much to start going walking on the wrong path you don't feel uh, you know you don't feel um hatred for that person but you just feel sad and disappointed like that's like what can i say like that's like true love and iro has always been like a father to um zuko and zuko has always like you know regarded iro as a father so yeah it was nice to see like you know them actually talking things out and I, I did like you know realize that they were actually probably going to the Lotus organization, and but I did not realize that there were so many distinguished people who were part of the Lotus, like you know the White Lotus. For example, I did know that um the guy uh, what was his name? I forgot. Saka's teacher. That guy was a part of it because obviously he himself gave the uh, the tile, the Lotus tile, to uh, Saka. So I know knew he was a part of it. Um. I don't think I realized that Bhumi is also a part of it. Neither um, Jong Jong and neither the uh, uh, Paku. I think that was his name, yeah, uh, Katara's teacher. So now thinking about it, like it's kind of interesting to see the whole, like you know, like place being like you know, like Paku is a water bender, um, Jong Jong fire bender, um, Bhumi earth bender, and um, the the Saka's master fire bender, like four of the different like you know like elements all at the same place that's why they said like you know like we don't have any uh like you know uh what do you call it like any barriers between the elements everyone is here 
and uh, like again like Paku was both Aang and Katara's teacher um the Saka's teacher was Saka's teacher um Bumi kind of helped Aang with a few earth bending tricks I think kind of a little bit uh and uh obviously um Zhang Zhang was also Aang's teacher in a way so yeah like it's like nice like you know it's kind of interesting to see how everyone is somehow you know connected to Aang and <clears throat> yeah and um <laughs> I loved <laughs> like I kind of thought that maybe like <laughs> when you know like um Paku when he said in season one when he said that I'm going back to the <laughs> you know like southern uh, uh water tribe um I kind of thought that maybe he's going to go like you know get back together with Katara's uh, grandma and <laughs> But I I thought that no maybe not like I'm like you know like this is like war time and who would even do that but <laughs> but yeah like in this episode we see they did get together and I'm happy you know like they never got that uh, what do you call it like chance and now that you know like it's never too late as they say <laughs> and that and like we also get a little story of how Bhumi conquered the whole like you know Mashu. And how since there were every every all the people all of his people has evacuated, he was free to do whatever the hell he wanted with the whole city. He just chucked the building away, <laughs> destroyed the you know the um, Philo statue, used it to destroy the bridge and everything during the eclipse. And it's nice to see that the eclipse did uh, the eclipse did help someone somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, that was that was the best chance that you can get out of that situation and uh, yeah and uh, that was the whole thing with um katara's group while ang he was facing his own moral like you know dilemmas uh he asked roku roku like ev not only roku like all the av avatars that he met um everyone said the same thing that i like we know that you are a good person you don't want to kill anyone this is not about you this is about the world and that's the biggest thing. And for the world, you need to get your hands dirty. And that's the biggest thing here. Now, <clears throat> now here's the thing. I still don't think Ang will kill Ozai. I don't know why, but I feel like he's going to probably do something else. Make probably make some, uh, you know, take some unique approach to the whole situation. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like you know, uh, thinking a bit too much but i feel like he's probably going to do that because as like you know like one thing has been established all the time in this show that avatar uh, not avatar sorry ang is a different avatar from all the other avatars he has his own ways of doing things so mo most probably he'll also do something with ozai that we know no one of us expects or something or maybe he'll just give him <laughs> who knows we'll see like you know like we're almost at the end and uh, now here's another thing that I, okay so di different avatars we met we met uh, Roku we met Kyoshi I think this is the first time Aang actually talks with Kyoshi I think so because once one time he, Kyoshi possessed Aang but that was just it um, and then we meet I think Kuruk that was his name the waterbender uh, avatar so we meet him he says like you know his uh, story about how he lost his wife to the face stealer the face stealer we met and how you know it was too late then when he realized uh you know the loss so that was like the, i think that's not the first time we did see him in a flashback you remember like one of the flashbacks when we saw him you know uh, fighting with uh his uh, not fighting but kind of sparring with uh, her, uh his master that uh that part so <clears throat> that was that now this is this time we meet a fire nomad after i think this is the first time yeah this is the first time we meet her um i forgot her name uh, i'll check it out later on but <clears throat> she tells one of the most what can i say eye-opening things um she says that Av the avatar should never get let go of his worldly possessions now this is very um what can i say um interesting 
because I never thought of it in that way because she is right you know like if the avatar takes off his worldly possessions why would he even need to save the world because he doesn't have any worldly possessions and since avatar cares about the whole world about the people because these are the worldly possessions chaining him that's why he can become the avatar he can save the world he needs to have an attachment otherwise he can't be the avatar that's why she says that you should not let go of your worldly possession uh, you know worldly uh, uh, attachments uh, because otherwise that fails the purpose of being an avatar you need that so like i never thought of it in that way and she's completely right and it was it was really fascinating to see her explain it in that way and yeah i realized that now now um now i do wonder what actually like you know um uh, Guru Pathik, you know, like Guru Pathik tried to teach Aang, like, you know, tried to enlighten Aang. And most probably, obviously, Guru Pathik was not, not an avatar. So he, he probably did not realize this point of view that, yeah, the avatar should not let go of his worldly attachments. And I guess it is needed to get off, you know, let go of your worldly attachments to get to the avatar state. That's why Aang cannot get into the avatar state, but he will probably be like, you know, like able to save the world, even if he doesn't go, like, you know, need, even if he does not use the avatar state. So yeah, that's one thing. And it, it was nice to like, you know, it, it's good to see that Aang decided against, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, letting go of his worldly attachments. And that's going to help him in the long run now, because he feels for the world, he cares for the world. And that is required, you know, to become the avatar. That, and then we meet the sea lion, uh, not sea lion, <laughs> the, the, the lion turtle, I think, sea lion turtle, I think they said, something like that. Now, I was thinking, like, where have I actually seen this type of a thing, you know, like, this is like a big turtle and it's like an island. And I think I remember, it's probably in Naruto, I feel like, you know, there was this tight uh, turtle in the water who moves, I think it was in Naruto, I can't remember. But it was in one anime where I saw this whole thing, you know, like it feels like an island, but it's an actually turtle. <laughs> so yeah, like this land turtle actually gives him like, you know, some wisdom. And it was like, you know, like, wait a minute, what did he actually say? This begin like darkness thrives in the world, but always yields to purifying light. Light can, okay, the true heart can just the poison of hatred without being harmed okay so yeah so he he tells him to wait and he's going to come i think he's probably he was probably mentioning about ozai like he's going to come and yeah ozai is going to come i guess he's ready with his fleet so yeah so okay uh, that was the episode number um 12 no 19 yeah 19 so now we'll start episode number 20 so yeah without further ado let's get started so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start all right here's the count three two one go sozen's comet part three into the inferno Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, don't say it like that. Yep. Is this Azula? Oh my god. Well, you're going to get a surprise very soon. Zuzu's coming back. Wait a minute. <laughs> My god. This girl. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I got choked to death. 
Yeah, I'm the Fire Lord. Oh my god, wow, this girl. Yeah, she she can't be Wow. You know what? It's better you leave this palace. Because this girl will make your day hell. Well, if she becomes a fire lord, everyone's screwed. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're here. <laughs> the eel. What was it called? The eel. Oh my god, here we are. Oh no. Yeah, what now? Oh, nice. Haha. <laughs> Oh my god, Toph can... Yeah, Toph... Like... In mid-air, Toph is extremely vulnerable. Wow, so many. My god. Huh. <laughs> Look at him. Just standing there. Great. Yeah, you're banished. <laughs> you're banished. Whoa, she really banished him. I was joking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, they're also banished, by the way. <laughs> okay. Whoa! Oh my! <laughs> oh, Doth! <laughs> my God! Ooh! God, she is insane in inside a metal chamber. This is a metal metal chamber. So he's the strong. She's the strongest here. Well, we got our first airship. Yep. Yeah, she can't see. <laughs> All right. Oh, maybe they're going to. Oh, yeah, a fake message. What? Wait, that worked? Okay, I guess. Well, everyone wants birthday cake, I guess. What is it? Sweet cake? Ah. Ah. Wow, they're awkward. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Your birthday. Happy birthday, I guess. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good work, Saka.
Oh boy, I would love if Ozai falls down in the water. You know, like standing in that ramp thing. Yeah, you're banished as well. Wow, this girl is paranoid. Oh, because of that. Yeah, you're banished. Yeah, without anyone to... Oh, you're talking back to me? Yeah! <laughs> Both of you are banished then. <laughs> Banishment! Oh wait, never mind. Whoa, this girl is crazy! <laughs> <laughs> well, both of you, I guess. My god, she is going to like... She's gone completely crazy after they, uh, um, uh, Tylee and Mai, Mai betrayed her. Here we go. Yep. Wow, okay, let's go. We have three firebenders here. And yeah, that's enough. These are masters. Whoa! Let's go. Oh, oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> Oh my god Yo Oof. Wow <laughs> Won't work <laughs> Azula's here with no servants and oh my god she's going crazy she has bags under her uh... oh my god Yep. My God. This is a very bad way to actually realize how mm, how you've messed up all your life. Like she's actually realizing that little by little, and this is the worst way possible. Oh my god! Yeah, what do we do? My god. Okay. What's he what's he even doing? Why is he There's nothing in there. What's he doing? Oh oh there's Ang oh Ang is there. Okay. I was like, what is he even doing? 
Yep, go to safety. All right. Ooh. Nice. I hope he falls to his <laughs> doom. <laughs> okay. So was I like, wait, what? <laughs> well. My god, here we are! After three seasons, finally! Oh great, the ship's destroyed. My god, look at him! Yep. Alright, let's go! Oh my god, this is... <laughs> oof. Yeah, you're crazy. And no, it won't work. Yeah, but I won't. Yeah, just when the comet is here. Otherwise, I don't think you're that much of a big deal. But Ang's firebending power will also increase, wouldn't his? Yeah. Nice! <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Wait. Oh. Is he trying to go ram into the airships or something? <clears throat> My god. Whoa. <clears throat> ah, burning the fo Wow, great. Yeah, even uh, the light. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, so that's what he's doing. My god. Oh my god. Yeah, come on, Saka. Yeah, Toph is the most at, at the most disadvantage here. It's in the middle of the sky. They're fighting. Oh no! Oh no! Metal bend! Toff! Oh, okay. Oh my god! Oh. Well. Oh, nice. They're here. Yeah, I'm the fire lord. Okay. Agnikai? 
I think Agni Kai. Yep. Yeah. L let him do his thing. Yeah. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, uh Wow. Okay, oh my god. Oh! Nice! Okay, we have earth, fire, water, and air, all at the same place. Ooh! Look at that! Oh! Oh no! Ang! Oh god! Come on, Ang! Oh, nice! Nice! Whoa! Come on, use your... Okay, probably he won't be able to do it. Like, Zuko did teach him, but he's not used to this. Okay, there you go. No, 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 Ang, come on. Don't. Oh, no, he hesitated. He hesitated. But okay, yeah, you do you. I'm sure he'll figure something out. Come on. Nice. Oh my god. Okay. Ooh. Wow, look at this. Oh. Oh. Oh no! Oh no, Katara! Oh no! Oh my god! 
Come on, healing. Heal him, heal him. Come on, quick. Blood bending. Come on, Katara. Blood bending. Oh God, I think blood bending can only do something to her. Oh my. Shut up. He just saved your life. Oh, exactly. Okay, that's the end. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, obviously, I'll do the next part. Uh, it's probably al already uploaded uh, in the next video. So, okay, let's talk about this uh, episode. This is episode number 20. Um, okay, here we see the beginning of the, like, you know, of the actual fight. Um, <clears throat> First of all, we see, uh, uh, not Katara, sorry, Azula losing it little by little. She, she's just like, you know, like the whole uh, betrayal that uh, Tylee and Mai, you know, uh, did was something that, as I said, like probably affected her the most because she did consider to them to be good friends. And seeing how they betrayed her like that, she she wasn't able to take it. But obviously, like you know, like the that's the thing, you know, like if you keep trying to control people by fear, it won't work out in the long run. It'll work out up till some point. But as soon as the person who you're controlling with fear gets something which is stronger than the fear that they're facing, for um, Mai, it was her love for Zuko. And for Tai Lee, it was her uh, friendship with Mai, both of them. As soon as they gain something which is even more stronger than the fear that they're facing, they're going to rebel. And it, it, it's kind of like, you know, the thing that happened here. And the main problem, the biggest problem here was Azula really considered them to be her, like, you know, best friends. And now here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> I like, I'm sure there will be like a thing that will come a lot of people will feel here they'll probably say that oh the friendship that azula tylee and mai had is that really friendship because she actually controlled them with fear and manipulated them now here's the thing actually yeah that is friendship at least for azula because azula doesn't know any other way to make friends the only thing she knows is to control people manipulate them make them fearful that's how she has been brought up from her childhood and that's the only way she knows to make friends in a very twisted way so yeah like that's her way of friendship and that in itself is a big like you know what can i say big no no because that's not how you make friends unfortunately azula doesn't know any other way to make friends so yeah for her that was, was genuine friendship Obviously, that won't work in the long run. And the only one you can blame here is probably uh, her dad. Yeah, I think, I think it kind of, you know, like everything kind of comes to her dad. Like her dad is the main problem here. Her dad has actually brought her up in this twisted manner, which made her the monster she is now. And it's actually messed up to think that, like, you know, making someone, you know, bringing up someone in this manner you know from their childhood like you know always uh making them feel as if yeah you're the best nothing can like you know defy you if anyone defies you just you know f like you know scare them off or kill them uh this way if you bring someone up obviously that person won't know how to socially interact with people they won't have friends and everyone needs friends like you know even if you're the world's biggest villain you do need friends you know otherwise your mental stability will be a problem um so yeah but if you're a psychopath you probably don't need friends so but obviously azula was not that azula had a heart even though it was probably like you know <laughs> hidden deep inside layers and layers of hatred anger um pride 
like anything, like all the things that, all the negative qualities that she has, it was probably hidden within all of that, but she did have it. And this, this whole betrayal broke her in a way she never imagined it would. She always thought that she didn't need any friends, but she did have a few friends who were her mental support. They're not here anymore. And that's why now she's like, oh, everyone's going to betray me eventually. So let's just banish them all. So yeah, she keeps banishing all the people and she's going crazy completely. And uh, <clears throat> now the whole thing with Azula here is um, she she's the same as Zuko. But the only difference that she has with Zuko is the people who she, you know, who she uh, was brought up. If if the position was reversed, if Zuko was brought up by um, what's uh, Ozai, and if Azula was brought up by her mom, and after that by her uncle, Iro, the positions would have been reversed today. Probably Azula would be fighting, uh, you know, um, Zuko today, and Zuko would be completely crazy, you know trying to like you know like banishing all the people and all, like doing that stuff their positions would be reversed that would have happened so it's it's actually the person the surroundings how they were brought up that's the main thing here and it was a shame it was a very big um you know uh bad luck i can say for azula that he she got you know she brought up she was brought up by a crazy person which is his dad her dad so yeah like that's why you know even though she did so many bad things i feel really sad for her you know for her the way she is actually you know facing all of these things today because she's not at fault you know she's really not at fault so yeah she does need punishment for all the bad things that she has done all the people she has killed all the people's life that she has ruined she does need a justice you know she does need to be brought to justice but <clears throat> i feel like this could have gone better if she actually stuck with zuko you know like instead of going to her dad if she actually stuck with zuko and you know, like you know stuck with iro and her mom this would have not happened probably so yeah now here we see azula actually facing like you know in front of the mirror she says her mom again and she sees how her mom like obviously that was not her mom you know that was her inner whatever like you know inner thing inner uh personification of her mother and she sees how her mom says that no i don't you know like i i love you that's like that's what i've come here i've not come here to laugh at you which probably shows that she herself knows that her mom did love her but she, like you know like otherwise it doesn't make sense because that was her inner feelings her inner feelings actually tell like for a moment i thought that like the mom would like you know say that yeah i hate you or something because that was azula thinking that was her mom but i was quite surprised to see that even her inner in her inner feelings her mom says that i love you so that probably shows how she also realized that her mom does care about her but she n was never able to accept that and she's regretting it now little by little and yeah it has started her like you know the way she's regretting everything just like how zuko like zuko also went through this phase for zuko thankfully there were people who helped him out of the whole situation for example iroh <coughs> excuse me iroh was there and iroh's teaching was there with him all the time you know, and she, uh, Zuko has, himself was able to realize this. Azula had none, no one. So I think like this could have been changed if Azula actually confided in her mom from the beginning, confided with Iroh from the beginning, and confided on her with her friends from the beginning. But she did none. So yeah, now she's going crazy because of that. Like it's a tragic, you know, it's a tragic thing. Nothing you can do about it. That was the whole thing with Azula. For the other characters, Saka, um, Atof, and Suki, they <laughs> I loved how Saka actually manipulated the whole situation, <laughs> saying that oh you have a like you know we're we're having a birthday celebration, <laughs> join us in the hall or whatever, and when they go there they just you know 
<laughs> he just opens the trapper and everyone falls into the water and wow that's brilliant like hats off saka he's, he's always been the best you know in, in intelligence she'll always he'll always be <laughs> oh my god and you know then he makes a very like you know like uh, what do you call it a very da- not dangerous but a very um yeah dangerous you can say uh, plan of actually crashing his the ship alongside all the other ships you know scraping them by so that she can he can take all of them at the same time and you know like it, it was a very dangerous situation thankfully they were kind of able to uh, what can i say like it does seem they're in trouble in the end you know when saka tries to like you know like cover stuff and suki's like almost on another ship completely they get uh uh you know, separated so hopefully it's like you know they're able to recover from that i'm sure they will but yeah and uh i loved how Toph did like you know handle the whole situation metal bending such a great thing to have you know inside especially inside of a metal ship she can just like you know manipulate the whole ship and just you know like destroy all the op- opponents and uh, yeah she kind of did that like, you know put out a metal armor and that was cool like you know seeing top fight like that and yeah that was the whole thing with them now the uh, whole thing with um uh, ang and uh ozai Ang does try to convince him, but unfortunately, I don't think Ozai will get convinced. He's crazy, you know. So yeah, now I do wonder what Ang is going to do now. He it does seem like the situation is kind of going towards the direction where it does seem like he needs to kill him. But I don't think he'll do that. I'm kind of looking forward to what he's going to do after this. Like I'm really curious how he's going to defeat him. And um, yeah, now he, like that whole situation when the thunder kind of comes and he. Like, you know, re- tries to redirect it, but cannot after seeing Ozai's face. Like, that is, um, yeah, like, and then Ozai starts talking big. He's like, oh, I'm the strongest. Haha, ha, what can you do? Like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? You almost died. You, you didn't die because Aang decided to take pity on you. Like, how can this, like, you know, this guy is completely, my God, like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the, the, the fighting animation was, as always, very, like, you know, amazing, like, like just look at the animation like <laughs> like like the choreography and like, you know the way they were fighting and everything so cool and not only that the whole situation with the lotus members actually trying to conquer ba sing se that was a great in itself we see how like you know like and i do realize i didn't realize this before and this episode i kind of realized that that uh, obviously because of the comment iroh's power will also be increased not only iroh jong jong's as well and Ang also probably because he knows firebending so that's something that i never realized but yeah we see that here and them trying like you know them controlling trying to take situate control of bossing say boomy and jong jong like you know boomy like kind of transporting them jong jong using his uh like you know firebending skills to protect everyone and um uh, paku using water bending and uh, to kind of slide them along like freezing it and um I forgot uh, Saka Sensei's name. He using his uh, you know sword technique, all that stuff, so good. And yeah, I'm sure they'll con- conquer Ba Sing Se very soon. So yeah, and the final thing is the Agni Kai, where I kind of real, I, I kind of thought that I, I I was kind of sure that they're probably going to do that, the Agni Kai, you know, Azula versus um, Zuko, because I don't see any other better way to end this whole situation, uh, like you know, this uh, brother versus sister thing. So <clears throat> now, yeah. Now here's the thing. Um, the Agni Kai starts. Zuko tries to, like, you know, get, like, you know, like, tries to, not tries to, but we see how he is kind of overpowering Azula. Azula obviously does not like that, and she's like, yeah, you know what? Let me just use my lightning to strike Katara because she can't do anything about this. And thinking about it, that's a very calculated like you know um plan that he came up she came up with in a matter of seconds because it is true katara is a waterbender she can't do anything to stop the lightning you know like in 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 fact if he tries to use waterbending there she'll get even more shocked so yeah she directs the right lightning at katara now i don't know like you know i'm sure zuko will be fine hopefully 
because Katara is there, she can heal him. And um, I'm sure, like, you know, like, Zuko will be fine. But I feel like to stop Azula, Katara needs to use bloodbending here. And I think he's, she's probably going to do that. And this is what I was saying, you know, like, you don't need to use bloodbending to kill people or do something like that. You can do it to save people. Here's one of the biggest examples. She can just, you know, constrict uh, uh, Azula, stop her in her midway, and uh, not let her fire vent, and heal, you know, like, um, uh, heal Zuko. And obviously, the Agnikai is just gone, like, no honor here, because Azula actually started the whole, uh, like, you know, like, started breaking the rule. He, she tried to attack Tara, who was obviously not involved in the Agnikai. So, yeah, the Agnikai is, like, you know, it, it doesn't even matter. You know, uh, Azula broke the rules. So, obviously, Katara can easily use bloodbending and stop her. And, uh, yeah, and now, I, I don't know, like, probably, like, as, uh, Katara also had, like, a, a little, what do you call it, like, uh, animosity with uh, Azula, because Azula did kill, kind of, Aang, in a way. So, who knows, I'm kind of... Uh, trying to think what is going to happen like i feel like the conclusion would work better with zuko versus azula and zuko defeating azula but i do feel like katara defeating azula would also probably be okay because she does have a like you know a vendetta against azula because you know azula did so many bad things and killed ang almost one time so yeah that was it i think and yeah, in the end, we see um, uh, Ozai saying that, ah, you're weak, haha, ha, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and then it stops. So, probably in the next episode. So, yeah, that was it. I'm going to stop this video here. As I said, the next part of the video is probably already uploaded. You can go check it out. So, yeah, I won't say, uh, see, uh, like, you know, like, um, I won't end, like, this video, this, this video, like, I'll end this video, obviously, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that i won't say like the words I, like the things that i usually say in the end like you know like see you guys next time all that stuff because i'm going to continue recording after this and we're going to jump right into the next episode uh in the separate video that i have and i will have my little discussion a big discussion probably in the next video i'll talk about my experience with avatar and all that stuff and what i plan on doing with gora so see you guys in the next video so yeah bye